welcome back to Waiting on God. My name is Karina. Um, it's been a little bit. I always feel like I always I say that every other video. I mean, but I think I I was doing pretty well, and then I got busy. Then I just let life happen. That's that's what I did. But um, I'm back. It's literally I think it's been like a month. Probably uh, uh, around a month, something like that about anyway um but i feel like well okay okay let's start this over hey you guys welcome back to waiting on god my name is karina um how are you guys it's been a it's been a little while since i sit down since i sit here and record actually um Yes, it's been a while because I usually sit at my desk and I um, do it there. To be honest, because it's a whole lot easier. It's easier this way because if you see here, I'll show you what we're working with. Hi, hello. You know, there's this setup and my computer there, the mic there. That is why. I'd rather just do it at the desk because I just flip the camera on and then there we go. There's nothing to set up besides the mic and both the camera. But um, I wanted to do it this way because we're gonna chat today. Yeah, so I just, I wanted to talk about my personal struggles in my walk. This one here, I feel like it's gonna be an ongoing video just because, you know, as your walk progresses, so do your struggles. So. Um, this is going to be what I've struggled with from when I came to Christ till now, which is going to be six years this year. Um, crazy how fast time flies, you guys. Personal struggles with my walk. Um, well... It all kind of comes down to a couple things, for the most part. It comes down to consistency and discipline. Two things that are on my goals for this year. <laughs> I figured after five years of not having discipline or consistency, now's a good time to start. Um, no, but seriously, you guys, it's, uh, it is something that the Lord is wanting me to to work on this year and um, it's what I've really been lacking consistency and discipline uh, consistency and discipline in my prayer life um, consistency and discipline and well, it all just kind of comes down to my prayer life honestly um, if you see me looking down I have my notes here um, but I wanted to talk about a couple things so one of them um, it's my struggle with my identity okay um, we can talk about my identity before Christ and my identity before Christ oh my gosh I feel like that'd be a whole other video <laughs> um, that'd be a whole other video I mean honestly I no okay let's not talk about before christ who cares who i was before christ um let's talk about when i came to christ and probably the first couple years first two to three years um i was dealing with a lot of self-condemnation i and i'm not i know i'm not the only one <laughs> i know many if not all deal with some kind of self-condemnation um and it was just beating myself up over the smallest thing and I know I've said it here before that I would feel like every time I failed God would just he was gonna kick me to the curb he was gonna get tired of me failing kick me to the curb and just move on to the next person that was um, not willing because I was willing but um, that would do better than I would I guess um, so I dealt with a lot of that, uh, self-condemnation, beating myself up, and then not accepting God's grace, 
um, and his love and thinking I was disposable. Also, I dealt with a lot of unworthiness and those things can really get you stuck in your walk. Um, especially unworthiness, I feel like it could really get you stuck from growing spiritually and maturing in Christ. Now, I am better, a lot better, should I say, uh, with the self-condemnation and um, my identity in Christ. Um, now I know God will not kick me to the curb and he will not just, you know, flick me away. That is not who God is. Um, and I know that now. So, you know, whenever I fail or I... I feel like I fail or whatever the case may be I, I I don't beat myself up over it so where was I Ugh, I lost it oh um, where I'm at now oh okay yes so I'm not dealing with the self-condemnation um, as much is it completely gone no but I'm not dealing with it as much and um, what kind of see and this is where let's we're gonna go there we're gonna you know recovering overthinker here now I used to deal with self-condemnation be myself up right now I don't do that and I really fight like don't do that don't go into that but then when I really I'm like okay I totally failed Lord but I feel nothing like just I feel nothing um I feel like I'm living off cheap grace <laughs> and so it's like then it kind of goes back to where it's like oh like man Karina like are you even repenting about what you did or like what you said or what you thought or whatever the case may be right I start thinking like are you even sorry are you even this are you even that so at this point I'm beating myself up over something else because I didn't feel the condemnation but guess what there goes the condemnation because now I'm thinking or trying to tell myself I'm living off don't live off cheap grace kind of thing what does that mean I don't know we might have to get into that in another video because um, there's a few things that came up to mind where it's like well what is it, what exactly does that mean for example it says that we need to rest in the Lord what exactly does that mean does that mean we forget about our problems um, they don't exist anymore <laughs> I'm good I'm resting in the in the presence of the Lord kind of thing um, does it mean, I mean, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? If you know what it means, you can comment down below. But anyway, back, back to the video. That's my struggle right now where I, um, I'm, I'm fighting for no con like no self condemnation, but then these other thoughts come in and then it kind of circles back to self condemnation. So yeah, but I shut it down I try to shut it down quickly because it would just it'll get out of hand and it's there's no need for it um, and I will I will say this again and I won't get tired of saying it just because um, I just I've come to really appreciate how important our identity in Christ is we are so we want to learn more and we want to grow more and we want to know our calling and we want to know the gifts what gifts does the Lord give us like what gifts of the spirits do we have gifts, gifts of the spirits sorry <laughs> what gift of this what gifts of the spirit do we have and um, you know all that cool stuff yet we're not putting we're not investing in our identity in Christ um, and what good is all of that if our identity is not rock solid in the Lord um, something that we forget is the more we know the greater the responsibility is I mean it just is if I knew what my calling if I had you know I mean if I'm called to more than YouTube if I know if I knew what that was um, that'd be a greater responsibility on me and if I'm not doing anything to get to that point then what good is it knowing what my calling is 
Uh, instead, I don't, I'd rather not know what my calling is, but work my way to whatever it is the Lord is leading me to, right? And investing in growing the roots. Something, you know, the deeper the roots, the deeper the roots, <laughs> the deeper the roots, the higher you can go, okay? So, or the higher you can, the deeper the roots, the higher you can grow. So keep that in mind and invest in time in the word and in prayer and in his presence, in worship, in the secret place. Um, this, sorry, you guys, this video, I don't know. See, this is what happens when I don't talk for like over a month to you guys. I just have to like get everything out. Um, I don't know that we invest too much time in the secret place. And if, I, I mean, I don't know. I know, that's so, okay, the secret place. Let's go there. That's another one of my struggles. So, uh, I'm not talking about my personal, like my, my struggles with my walk. I'm not saying anything t for people to compare their walk to mine. I'm not saying anything for to make anyone feel bad or like to brag in any which way or whatever. Like, I mean, I don't know. Some people take what somebody says. It's twisted and it just becomes something else. But anyway, I just I want to share my experience and maybe you're you know, you can relate. That's it. Um, what were we just talking about? Ugh. Talking about the secret place. That is also something that I've been struggling with. So a little bit about what my walk was like the first, I'm going to say the first two years. Um, three years because I really went all in in 2018, all of 2018, all of 2019, all of 2020. Anyway, so I, the first three years, I, I went all in, you guys. I mean, I went all in. I was studying um, from, you know, a good chunk of the day in prayer or conversation, not like praying for or interceding for people, but like in conversation with the Lord. Um, I was in worship a lot. I was, I was getting into his presence. I was really dedicating a lot of time in my room, um, to the Lord for the first three years of my walk. A lot happened in that private time. I, you know, a lot happened in the private time. Um, and then after those three years, you know, I still had my days where I would go and I would go into worship and then that's how I heard the calling to YouTube and you know, all that stuff. This past year, I want to say year, it could be more. It hasn't been that way anymore. Um, I went weeks without getting into the secret place and, you know, going to my room, closing the door and just worshiping and just getting into his presence. And even my mom, she, you know, she kind of told me it's a little something that she ex or she heard and she felt the Lord was telling her like to tell me like you need to get back in the secret place. So I was trying to get back in there. Is it as easy? No, it's not. Um I it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle to go back and um get into that zone um so there's is that the consistency right like we lose we lose it um but all i can say i mean because you know like getting into that place where you're just undone in his presence a lot happens like I don't even know what like how to explain it you hear him he speaks clearly um, you become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit um, I know that not many people have the time to do that especially if your parents something else I struggle with let's just move on over 
Something else I struggle with is um, brushing off dreams and visions, okay? Um, or even like the gifts of the spirit, like discerning of spirits and, and stuff like that. I, again, the more I get into the secret place, the more sensitive I am to the Holy Spirit, the more I can sense something, right? I don't know if that's the right word for it, but that's what we're going with. I feel like there was a shift, and so I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God to clarify and just give me more details, but that's why I decided to change the setup because I wanted to make this a little bit more something. Um, brushing off the gifts. So it just, okay, I get, for example, I'll give you an example. Last night, uh, going to bed, I was turned everything off. I turned, I rolled over to the side and immediately I see what looks like someone, I mean, I'm going to say it's like African. Um, I, I don't know. And the face was kind of like painted. Um, I don't like, it was kind of creepy. Like it was like a little scary, not scary, but it was a little creepy. And I mean, it looked like someone involved in witchcraft and the voodoo stuff right and so i asked god like what was that what was that why did i see that is that you is that the enemy trying to scare me what is it i don't get clarity so i just dismiss it like i just like you know i forget it same thing with dreams sometimes i get some dreams or for example another vision i saw i was awake i was writing i see a white snake coming over towards uh towards my shoulder i can't even remember what if it was like green eyes red eyes or what it was i don't remember i probably wrote it down but um a white snake coming around my shoulder i mean i saw it clearly as I was writing and I asked the Lord what does that mean I try to try to google like you know characteristics of a white snake or, or you know just I don't know things that could probably help me I don't know so I just dismiss it um I did think be wise as a serpent gentle as a dove but I don't, I don't know then there was another one where I was awake as well and I clearly see as if I was driving and I went head on with another car. Don't know what that means either. <laughs> I know that in dreams, the cars could be your ministry or your walk or whatever, but I don't, I don't have the clarity. I don't even know like, God, is this you? Is this the enemy? Like, what is it? Um, so I dismiss it. Prayer life. You guys, I can sometimes say like prayer life sucks. Um, in the but when I say prayer life, I mean like that intercessory prayer, um, not necessarily my conversations with God. I mean I talk to God throughout the day, but it's that like getting on your knees and like going to war, like going and fighting for someone or or, or whatever it is. Um, waking up at three in the morning, I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it. And then I'm like, eh, not today. Um, should I be waking up at three in the morning every day for the rest of my life? I don't know. Are we supposed to? I have no idea. It's the consistency. If it's for a season, I mean, I wish I would do it, um, wholeheartedly for the season like man lord yes if it's for a season i will wake up every single day at 3 a.m for that season and then see what comes out of it right but no and so yeah i mean i think i've babbled for a really long time already you guys um if you would like another round of this one we can get into more details or um I don't know. I mean, you guys tell me. You tell me 
what you want but i i know i can i know i have so many more struggles but for today i think this is it um i know that i kind of just breezed on by with some of them like the prayer thing um we can go into more details if you guys want but yeah anyway i think that's it for now i've babbled on and long long enough um I thank you guys for watching. I really thank you guys for watching and sticking around for all you 313 people that are here. Um, it's really funny. It's really funny because I wish I knew who the 300 people were. I think I know probably like 15. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think I know maybe 15 to 20 of people that are subscribed. Um, but yeah, uh, all right, you guys, God bless you and, um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>